Hey everyone, welcome to section 3.1, future value and the compounding of interest. So in this example, it looks like the bank is offering a certified deposit and we have an option to select our investment period. Uh, Jonathan, in this case, he looks like he's investing $8,000 and we want to figure out um, what the maturity will be based off of the investment period he chooses. So let's take a look at drawing a timeline first. The timeline will help us understand which way the money is going. So remember, we are initially investing in the present value and then we're moving forward. So the money is moving forward, so the money should get bigger. So let's just take a look at it in terms of um, part A. <clears throat> so we know the initial investment okay, is $8,000 and that's at year, one, uh, year zero. And the part A, we're looking at a three year. So if you imagine one, two, three, somewhere around here. Okay, so year three, um, we, we're basically trying to figure out what is the value of that money here in year three. Okay, so let's take a look at um, our variables. So our interest rate is a 4% interest rate. Our time, so again, if we take a look at this example, we're from year zero up until year three. So money's moving forward three years. And our present value is the um, $8,000. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that negative. And basically, we're just use, making it negative because when we use the um, future value function, it's e either the present value or the future value needs to be a negative number. But it's good to visualize it in the sense that we're actually um, spending that $8,000. So it's a cash outflow of $8,000, so it's a negative. And ideally, our future um, value, that's gonna be a positive number. So that's gonna come in as a positive number. So now that we have uh, part A, all the variables, we can go ahead and use the formula. So in this case, we're gonna be using the future value formula. And our rate is our 4%. The number of periods we calculated is three years. And the payment, in this case, we're not making any initial or we're not making any additional payments. The present value, again, remember, we're presently giving out $8,000. And in this case, we keep the type, uh, the ending period. Okay. Let's just move that up. So that is our um, <clears throat> value at three years. Okay. Now it's nice that we have the timeline because instinctively we can we know that money moving forward, uh, this number should increase. Okay. So uh, you know of course we can use Excel. So we know that interest rate doesn't move. So we can keep that steady. Present value is going to stay the same. Again, that's our uh, initial investment. That doesn't change. The only thing that's changing is our time. So in B, we see that it's a six-year investment. In C, it's a 10-year investment. And finally, we have a 20-year investment. So you can just imagine that the numbers will increase due to compounding interest. So let's take a look at our values. Okay, uh, that looks about right. So again, it's. I encourage you to um, complete the question completely in Excel first before you uh, move it into the homework. That way you can see if there's something uh, a little off. But in this case, money moving forward, the money should increase. So let's put that into to our uh, homework. All right, looks good. Thanks for watching and happy financing.